guys and welcome back to my channel my name is diana if you're new here and today i'm going to be telling you all about my experience getting my first rn job so if you have yet to see my last video i talked about the timeline from when I graduated to when I took my NCLEX. So in this video, I'm kind of going to piggyback off of that and continue the timeline and tell you about how long it took me to find a job, when I started applying for jobs, when did things start coming together, how long it takes, yada, yada, yada. So if you're interested in hearing about that, definitely give this video a watch. Okay, so to begin, I'm gonna be talking about my timeline from when I got my past results from the NCLEX to when I officially accepted the offer for my first job. And then after I go through my timeline, I'm gonna talk about some tips that I discovered throughout this process and things that I think would help you if you are a student who is going to be searching for jobs in the near future. I've heard a lot of different things as to when to start applying for jobs. I've heard people who have got offered and accepted jobs while they were still in school. I've heard people who who had to wait until they passed their NCLEX to start applying and getting offers for jobs. I think that this is where it depends on where you live because when I went to my undergrad in Nebraska, I had a lot of nursing friends and almost every single one of them were offered jobs before they even graduated. And some of them even got to start working before they even passed their NCLEX. So I don't know how that exactly works but I know there are states that that is an option for you. Now to my good fortunes, um, of course, the area that I live in, that is not how it works. And I realized this very, very early on in my job hunting <laughs> experience. Because I was naive and I thought, I'm going to start applying right away so that I can get a jump start and you know beat out all these people who I'm going to be graduating with. I started submitting applications probably beginning of November and mind you I graduated like December 8th or something like that is when I considered myself graduated and done. So in November I was submitting applications. I wasn't submitting a lot. I was just kind of picking and choosing interesting jobs that I would like to work at. I just a range of hospitals. I was not being specific on where I wanted to work. Of course, the most bulk of my applications I was submitting were at the hospitals nearest me and the hospitals that I would more likely want to work at, but I did not just not apply to all the hospitals because I know as a new grad, you're like at the bottom of the totem pole in the nicest way possible. So November, December, I started applying for jobs and this is when I learned very, very quickly that they're not going to bat an eye at your application if you are not licensed. So this was a very harsh reality of just the application process in general. I have talked about this with a lot of my friends that I graduated with and this just seemed to be the consensus for the area that we live in. I got denied within like an hour of putting in applications. I was just rejected, rejected, rejected. So yeah, it just, that's how it was. And you know, I started, me and my friends were getting discouraged because it was like, okay, we're not getting jobs. Like we're graduating. Like everyone else has secured jobs before they even graduated. Like we started comparing ourselves to people that we knew. And this is when it started getting a little bit tougher for us. The rest of December, I really stopped applying to jobs because I knew what the answers were gonna be. I knew that no one was gonna give me a second look. So I just kind of stopped. And I had applications that were pending that were under review, but to this day, I haven't heard back from those jobs. So unfortunately, it was a really rough start for me just because hospitals here don't really care if you're you're about to graduate in a month. Why are they going to save a position that there could be veteran nurses working a year or two and hold a position for you when you haven't even taken your NCLEX, you might not even pass your NCLEX. Why are they gonna hold that position for someone? I know it sounds harsh, but like if you think about it in that way, it makes sense. I can't even like be mad at these employers because I, I would probably do the same thing. So I waited and this was also a driving force as to why I wanted to keep upping my NCLEX date because the sooner I took my NCLEX, the sooner I passed, the sooner I could actually start applying for jobs. Officially on January 16th, I got my pass for the NCLEX and this is when I was like, yes, it is job hunting time. The job that I was most advocating for was actually where I did my senior rotation 
in school. So I made a really great connection with my preceptor and I introduced myself to the unit manager. I emailed my resume to her before I left just so she can kind of remember me and you know know that I'm going to be wanting to apply for this unit eventually. On the 18th, it was a Monday, I emailed the unit manager that I passed. She had told me previously to keep in touch with her while I was scheduling my NCLEX. I was very fortunate because at this time that unit was hiring. There was a job posting on the website where I could have applied. So I filled it out, I applied, I emailed her. I was like, hey, I just submitted my application. Keep an eye out for this job application for me. That was on Monday morning on the 18th. And to my surprise, she responded in like an hour. And she was like, oh my gosh, congratulations, Diane. I'm so happy for you. I'm gonna forward this to the, who did she? She forwarded it to the assistant manager. We emailed back and forth and I essentially, I scheduled my interview for that same week on Thursday. That happened relatively fast for me. So this is all within the first week after I passed my NCLEX. So Monday morning I emailed her, Thursday I got the job interview and I wasn't putting all of my eggs in one basket because even though I've already worked on the unit, even though I know the managers, even though I know the nurses there, I really didn't want to get my hopes up and not apply to other jobs because I knew that I really didn't have much experience for them to be hiring me. So I did continue to submit applications. So after I passed the NCLEX, I changed my resume. I put my license number on there. I was licensed, I was registered. So I changed up my resume to reflect that and then I started submitting a whole new round of applications. Again, I submitted to everything. Now I was picky from the start. I know that most people <laughs> will be like, Diana, you're not going to get the job that you want the first time. I understand that, but I also 100% knew I did not want to work med surge. Didn't care what people said. I was not going to work a med surge floor. There was no way I was going to do that. I hate med surge. I hate that environment. There was no way I was working med surge. Because I was being picky in that way, I did not submit a single med surge application. I only applied for ICU type jobs. I applied to step down units. I even applied to oncology because even though oncology could be classified as med surge, it's very specific to a type of nursing, you know, oncology. And then I still applied for pediatric floors. Those are the type of jobs that I applied for. I did not submit a single med surge application and and I was not going to. Something I wanted to talk about is that this takes a lot of time and if you ask anyone who is searching for jobs, this isn't like something that you get a call for, you have an interview and then you get offered the job the next day. Like don't expect it to take like a week or two, it could take a month or two. The job that I interviewed for initially was my number one, what I wanted, it is an ICU job. And luckily I was offered the job on a February 5th. It's actually so funny, I was driving to the mall at the time with my best friend who I took the NCLEX with, we like impulsively switched the days together. We were shopping and we were in the car when I got the call. So here I am, we're just driving to the mall and I get the call and it's like, hey, blah, 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 we would like to offer you the position. And I, I don't know if my brain just exploded or shut down or both, but like I couldn't even make out words. It was probably the most unprofessional phone call I've ever done in my entire life, but I was just freaking out. I was so excited. I literally couldn't compose myself. She offered me the job, told me the pay told me what it entails, told me the start date, everything. And I was like, okay, it's like you're more than welcome to accept now or if you wanna take the weekend and call me back on Monday and accept later, blah, 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 blah. So I told her I would give her a call back. Even though I knew I wanted to accept right away, I still needed to like process it and like compose myself because I was just so excited. I literally couldn't speak. I couldn't speak words. I wish someone was recording this phone call because it's this poor lady. And then like two hours later, I ended up calling her back and I officially accepted the job. She told me that my first day would be March 1st. So it is currently February 21st. So I start in about eight days. And you're probably wondering what unit is this? I am working in the neuro ICU. It is a level one trauma center. It is a Ronald McDonald house. It's just a nationwide hospital. It's a huge hospital. And that's exactly the kind of hospital I wanted to work at. Like teaching hospital, everything, the whole works. I'm super excited. I'm so happy and fortunate. Mm, so excited. From when I passed my NCLEX to when I start my first day, March 1st, it was about a month and a half. So 
like I said, a month, two months, it takes time. Do not get discouraged with all the rejection letters. I promise a job is out there for you. You just have to wait patiently for it. Shifting over, I wanna kind of talk about some tips to land your first job that I've learned throughout my journey as I was interviewing and applying for jobs. I learned a couple of things and I also, looking back, I wish I would've done things differently. I feel like I would've made my job hunting a little bit easier for myself. So the first couple of tips is for students who are currently students right now and will be applying in a couple of months or whenever you graduate. The first thing I want to talk about is asking questions in clinicals. When I was in clinical, this was something that me and my clinical group always did is that when we were paired with our nurses, hopefully you're making a good relationship with these nurses and you're, you know, talking to them. There's going to be downtime when they're charting and you're not just going to be sitting there quietly like twiddling your thumbs or something like talk to them, make a relationship with them. Something that we always did is in every single clinical rotation that we were in, in every single hospital, even if it's not a hospital, or a unit that you want to work in we just talk to the nurses and we ask them questions about how their application process worked how what kind of jobs they got as a new grad how long they've been working in the unit any tips for them so literally talk to the nurses the nurses there are gonna be like your biggest source of Intel so utilize it obviously don't ask offensive questions that's something that I would recommend get the inside scoop from the nurses <laughs> bouncing off of that make good relationship with your instructors so our instructors obviously partnered with our school and they're working through the school but most of the time that is not their only job they are also nurses in other hospitals with full-time jobs so make good relationships with them because they could potentially be working at a hospital that you want to work at they could be working in a unit that you want to work at or they could even be a source of reference for you when you are applying for jobs and just make a relationship you know that's the the biggest thing about nursing is building rapport. So this is a good time to practice building rapport with the nurses, with your instructors, and it's gonna help you. I promise it's gonna help you when you're job hunting. I made a really great relationship with my instructors and almost every single one of them I use as a reference when I was job hunting. I texted them, I was like, hey, is it okay if I use you as a reference? Yes, of course, we would love to be a reference for you. The next part is something similar, but this is really only if you get placed on a unit that you want to work at or you could potentially see yourself working at. Try to introduce yourself to the unit manager, whether that's asking your instructor to kind of help set that up or ask the nurses there to set that up. Try to introduce yourself, make your name and presence known to this unit manager because if you're gonna be eventually applying for a job, you're gonna want them to know who you are. You are gonna want them to know what application to look for. If you can, if you can, try to get their email. When you are applying for jobs, let's say there's a job posting for that unit, you could always do what I did and apply for the job and then email them. Of course, this only works if they know who you are. You don't want like a stranger emailing you. But if you made a great relationship with them, if you introduced yourself, if you made your presence known, they should remember you. And when the time comes to apply for applications, apply for the job and then email them. Or if the job posting is not posted for that unit, just email them like, hey, I passed my boards. I am job hunting. I really had a great experience on your unit. I would love to work for you. I was just curious if there's job postings available or when the next round of hiring is gonna happen. Talk to them. But now you have the in, you have the email. The email is golden. That is what you need. That is what you want, the email. The next tip that I have is something that I wish looking back I would have done because I think it would have made this whole process a lot easier. Get a job as a tech. Whether that's a CNA, PCT, PCN, UAP, whatever you call it, wherever you're from, a tech. Work as a tech. I actually, fun fact, never got my CNA license, so I never worked as one. My school did not require you to have your CNA license in order to start nursing school, but I do know that there are some schools that require it. When you are applying for applications, you're more likely to get a job as an internal hire versus external. And that's gonna make it so, so, so much easier. This is also a really great experience, which is what employers wanna see. They wanna see that you've been working as a tech. This is also a really great way to make relationship with the nurses, make great relationships with the unit manager so that when you do start applying, they already know who you are. They all can vouch for you and they're more likely to pick you over someone like me. If you are still in school and you are not working as a CNA or PCN, whatever you guys call it, try maybe looking into that. The next thing is, I don't know if this is everywhere, but a lot of the big hospitals here have new grad residencies. And this is something that's really great opportunity for us as new grads 
to get a stepping stone, get the experience. Now, the residency is still a full-time position. It's not like you're just an intern, you're not gonna get paid, you are paid but they take a longer period to train you so that then you have experience as a nurse. It's only for new graduates, I think within the year, and you just work as nurses that way and get your training that way, so then you're more prepared to move on to a real RN job. I think, I don't know for sure because I didn't apply to any, but I'm almost positive the new grad residencies don't pay as much as an RN, just a normal RN, but I don't think that the pay is that different. It would be significant for you to like not do it, so keep that in mind. Obviously do your research, but that is a really great option if you're having a hard time landing a job try looking for the new grad residencies. This is kind of something I've talked about but I kind of want to reiterate is that as a new grad you're probably not going to get the job of your dreams the first time. Now if you're extremely lucky you might but sometimes you just it's, you just can't. You want a specialty unit that takes time and experience and you're, you might not get that the first time. Get the experience, get your certifications that you need, build up your resume, make connections and then start applying then you're more eligible you're more likely to get a job if you've already worked one year as an rn don't be bummed if you're not getting your dream job this is also kind of a summary of everything that i've talked about but once you get into the nursing profession i feel like it's not about your grades and it's not about your experience it's almost about who you know you know what I mean? Like, who do you know in this hospital? Do you know the managers? Do you know the nurses? Who's gonna vouch for you, especially as a new grad? So this is why working as a tech is really awesome because they all know you. They're all gonna vouch for you. You already have these connections. You know these people. They're gonna be more likely to hire you versus someone else. For the nurse, the job that I got, I made such a great relationship with my preceptor. I made friends with the nurses. So then when I went to apply, and applied with the manager and emailed the manager, I texted all of these nurses because I made great relationships with them that I have their numbers. I texted all of them and I was like, I just submitted my application, go tell the manager that you love me, that you want me to work for them, blah, 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 blah. I have so many people vouching for me. So that's essentially why I got this job. They're all like, yes, she's great. She had a great experience here. She was a great nurse when she worked here. She's so hardworking, she would be a great fit. And here I am, employed. Don't be discouraged, guys. I had my fair share of rejection letters. It sucked, it sucked, it sucked. But there's a job out there for everyone. There's jobs everywhere for everyone. Just be patient with it. If you're a student now, be proactive and make those relationships like I talked about. Be proactive if you're not working as a tech, maybe consider getting a job as a tech. Even if you only have like a year left, I think it's definitely worth it. Especially if you're working in, if you're living in a big city area where there's big hospitals, you might run into the same problems that I did when I was applying for jobs. Just something to consider, things that I wish I would have done differently, but ultimately, if you're still a student, you still have so much time. So be proactive, get your name out there, make those connections, work as a tech, and get the job of your dreams, baby. Like, this is why we're here. That's it, that's all I really wanna talk about.